What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out Jeff Hardy in rehab. Kane has become the most hated wrestler, and Becky Lynch slams former WWE star man. In other wrestling news, uh, I've been seeing a lot of what's been said from Kane, not only just recently, but within just the past few months. Kane goes by you know his real name glenn jacobs he's been saying a lot of questionable things so we're gonna get into that and uh you know all these other re new wrestling related news stories so make sure you subscribe to wrestling if you haven't already let's check this out <laughs> What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, <clears throat> back with another video. With Money in the Bank just a week away, what surprises will WWE have in store for the WWE Universe? Join us now as we look at this week's edition of the Blue Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Jeff Hardy in rehab, wrestlers react to Roe vs Wade decision, mm -hmm. Kane is now wrestling's most hated, Bray Wyatt's new name and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out wrestlelamia.co.uk and our wrestling channel, Incredible. As always we won't recap the matches but just look at the good, the bad and the downright ugly. As always we start off with the good as number one, a perfect parody. Natalia's incredible impersonation of SmackDown Women's Champion Ronda Rousey was a good way to add insult to injury Natalia inflicted on Rousey two weeks ago. Natalia vs Ronda isn't the stuff of legend, but the WWE is actually doing its best it can to build heat for the match. We can't even believe she came out with a stroller. I mean, come wow. on, this is gold. <laughs> Number two, instant prestige. Agunther's already made the Intercontinental Championship prestigious as he looks like an invincible monster who's only going to get stronger. We'll skip the usual talk of how the IC Championship hasn't been the same in the last few years, but we'll point out the Intercontinental Champion is a good substitute for title matches. Apparently, he's, they had a rematch, Ricochet and uh, Gunther, they had a rematch, and apparently he just squashed Ricochet again. So what was the point of the rematch? Like, I get it, you gotta build up Gunther, but... <laughs> at the cost, at the cost of Ricochet, it just sucks because Ricochet he deserves. I feel like a a solid push. He's had the Intercontinental Championship, and it it just seemed like it was a paperweight. Honestly, you know what I'm saying. So I don't know what they're gonna do with Ricochet. I don't know if he's just gonna be the guy to put over other guys, but I don't know. Is in light of Roman Reigns rarely defending his undisputed championship. Putting the belt around Gunther's waist has instantly elevated it from mid-card title holders such as Apollo Crews and Ricochet. Number three, heel Viking Raiders. Is the yeah, WWE I heard, finally taking? I heard they repackaged them again to be, you know, heel characters. Taking the Viking Raiders seriously. Well, it sure looks that way after Eric and Ivar wiped out the New Day's dance celebration with Shanky and a very grumpy Jinder Mahal. The Viking Raiders have been misused for the last two years with Eric and Ivar working as a comedy duo when they should be crushing opponents. Yeah. A feud with the New Day is a great way to keep both teams busy while the Usos seem permanently parked as undisputed champions. Number 4. A Fabulous Finish The Sami Zayn vs Shinsuke is a match that fans can count on for fast paced action. Although Simi vs Shinsuke has happened a bit too much recently, yeah. the finish was fresh as Shinsuke nailed Zayn with his finisher outside the ring, only they get caught with Zayn's halluva kick inside the ring giving Sami the win. But that was good, what about the bad as number one, can Sheamus and Drew coexist? Or when in doubt, break out the can they coexist trope? Well such was the case last night when Adam Pearce booked Sheamus and Drew McIntyre against the Usos with the stipulation that both the Scottish Warrior and the Celtic Warrior would land a spot in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match if they won and they'd be out if they lost. The match itself was odd because it showed two partners who can't stand each other's guts defeating the WWE's best tag team. Wow. I heard that this match went down. I, I just didn't know like the, you know, the context of it or whatnot. It kind of seemed confused when you guys let me know about it, but it does make the unified tag team champs or whatever you want to call them look incredibly weak that they can't beat two people that hate each other. I don't know. If a tenuous, intense team like Sheamus and Drew can defeat the Usos, why can't any talented teams? Yeah. Number two, dragging out Dupree. Why is WWE dragging out the Max Dupree segments? Is there an end game to having Dupree announce he's ready to debut his clients only for him to cancel at the last minute due to a prima donna style slight? Perhaps the WWE thinks making the fans wait 8 months for a wrestler's debut is the best course of action after <laughs> how WWE. well Veer Mahan's delayed debut panned out. I will be the first to admit things did actually work out there. Unfortunately, unless there's a brilliant end game, this is doing nothing to build interest in Dupree's clients making their grand entrance on SmackDown. 
There was nothing downright ugly as the WWE did a good job building up money in the bank as well as developing a new storyline with the Viking Raiders heel turn. Roman Reigns' absence is hurting SmackDown, but the WWE's writing team deserves credit for continuing the build to the undercard to build the upper card up with a push for Gunther, the aforementioned heel turn for the Viking Raiders, and the still intriguing story of when Sami Zayn's fantasy camp with the Bloodline will come to a painful end. But what do you guys think of the blue brand yeah. this week? I didn't watch SmackDown this week. I just let you guys update me. That's pretty much what it was. I <laughs> the last SmackDown I watched was when Brock Lesnar returned. So, uh, I don't know, man. It's just like Roman not being there. And we are kind of already know what's, you know, what's really kind of panning out, what they plan on doing for SummerSlam. Money in the Bank, outside of the Money in the Bank briefcase matches, that's it. I don't think anything else really matters on that pay-per-view. It's like a footnote, honestly, because we all want to see, I guess, what's going to happen again with Brock and Roman and how that's going to play into it. So the only interesting thing about Money in the Bank is who's going to win really for the men's side of things. I think a lot of people are intrigued on that part. Everything else is kind of just like, a, eh, whatevs. Let's just hurry up, get to SummerSlam, get this shit over with. Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the yeah. news. Now first story looks at Jeff Hardy entering rehab. A topic this today's is, uh, news is a report news. that Jeff Hardy has entered treatment for alcohol abuse. AEW President Tony Khan discussed Jeff's decision during a media call about Sunday's Forbidden Door pay-per-view. The Wrestling Observer slash Figure 4 Online's Josh Nason summarized Khan's comments about Jeff Hardy seeking treatment. Khan said that Hardy is in treatment, but couldn't say much more other than he stayed in contact with Matt Hardy and that AEW will continue to support Jeff as he goes through the treatment process. According to the Observer report, Tony Khan was not happy when someone suggested John Moxley and Jeff Hardy's situation was similar as Khan came back to question later and bristled at the notion that Hardy and Moxley's situations are similar. He said that Moxley never put anyone in danger mm -hmm. and that the two situations were apples and oranges and didn't like to hear them compared. Yeah. Khan's comments about Jeff also included the revelation that AEW has a wellness policy of its own. The AEW president didn't elaborate on what the program entails but said it's open to anyone in the company and that he hopes talent utilizes it before there are problems. Now we wish Jeff Hardy all the best as he enters rehab and works to conquer his personal demons. Do you think this is his last chance though? Let us know in the comments down below. To be honest with you, man, uh, the comparison between him and Moxley is very different. Moxley was definitely dealing with some personal issues that, you know, led to substance abuse. But from what we know, it didn't lead to him being in a situation where it could have harmed somebody. This is not the first time we've seen this incident with Jeff. This has been multiple, multiple times, multiple instances where he's been in a situation where he could have potentially hurt someone because he's behind the vehicle while under the influence, you know? So hopefully this helps, but I do think if it doesn't work this time, yeah, man, he may need to just go ahead and hang it up. Hell, even if it does work this time, if he's able to overcome it, I think the their discussion may need to happen of him potentially walking away and just trying to live out the rest of his life because – wrestling i don't know it just seems like once he gets into wrestling everything's good for a little bit then he slips back down that slippery slope don't know if it's because of the injuries pain his body going through not sure can't really uh make a decision on that because i'm not him but I, I do wish he you know continues to get the help he needs and you know work through whatever he's working needs to work through because uh, right now him being in the ring and him just you know moving around the way he's been moving is hasn't really been helpful for, to, for his career and anybody else you know that's like close to him so wishing the best for you jeff you know do what you gotta do bro next up wrestlers react to roe versus wade decision now, the wrestling world is reacting to Dobbs vs. Jackson's Women's Health Organization, the abortion rights case yeah, recently heard by the United States Supreme topic. Court. 
The court's recent decision that abortion is not a constitutional right is creating considerable controversy as people react to the decision overturning Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey decisions. Consequently, individual states will pass their own laws regarding abortions. There are far too many reactions to include them all, but here are a few. Caleb Axton tweeted, Moving backwards, sad day. Renee Paquette just mentioned awful. Page directed her comments at Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, saying, So this guy just wants everything overturned that doesn't directly affect him. This is so effed. Mia Yem said, Not sure if I'll be streaming tonight, but either tonight or tomorrow night, I'll be doing a charity stream for the National Abortion Federation, NAF. Mm. Jessica McKay said, I'm just at loss for words. The decision is going to be discussed for some time to come, and it's likely going to lead to some strong comments and reactions, as our next story suggests. As Kane is wrestling's most hated man right now. Yeah, um, it's it's one of those very touchy subjects right now, and I I think women have the right to express their displeasure for this, and we got to get into this whole Kane situation because I've seen Kane's tweets, and boy. It caused a lot of a lot of dissension between people that are, you know, for what happened and then people that are against what happened. And just, you know, just wrestling fans as a general in a general sense, because Kane, this is not the first time he said some very controversial things as of late, you know. Oh well, he doesn't go by Kane Glenn Jacobs. He's the mayor. I forgot what city he's the mayor of. Don't really care. It's just some of these comments he's made on Twitter has just been like, really, bro? This is how you really feel right now? A WWE Hall of Famer Kane, a.k.a. Glenn Jacobs, is facing nuclear-level heat on social media after he tweeted this about Roe vs. Wade case. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. This clears the way for states like Tennessee to pass strong protections for the unborn and is an answer to a prayer for so many. Hashtag right to life, hashtag victory. Oh, Jacobs yeah. is the Republican mayor of Knox County in okay, Tennessee and maintains a vocal presence on social media about his political views. Now, here are some responses to Jacobs' comments. Current Impact star Rosemary didn't hold back just tweeting, wow. you literal piece of shit. Another commented, seriously, I'm tired of seeing I love Kane but F. Glenn Jacobs. That F. Kane and F. Glenn. He made a career off someone else's career, whether it be Kevin Nash or Taker. Trash wrestler, trash Damn. human. Whew. One fan contrasted Jacob's anti-vaccination comments with Jacob's stance on abortion. This went completely opposite to the reasoning that you gave when you explained when you considered yourself a libertarian. I just want government to leave me alone, but I'm sure you know that. I'm sure you don't care either. And there were plenty of furious fans, one who tweeted, Respectfully, WWE, please never have Kane return to TV again. It's a real shame you chose to be a monster inside and outside the ring. Damn. Former AEW Women's Champion Dr. Yeah, Brett I Brady did see tweeted this, uh, it. Uh, tweet. Cut it as a dentist. Hashtag idiot. At least one Twitter account tried to put a humorous spin on things. As, as WWE creative <laughs> humor tweeted, Kane continuing the most successful heel run of his career. Facts, bro. He went from the devil's favorite demon to the devil's favorite mayor. <laughs> the devil's favorite politician, bro. He is continuing the heel run and uh yeah man <laughs> great to see him right now no no doubt yeah a kane isn't the only wrestler who comments about the supreme court's decision concerning roe v wade leading to criticism as becky lynch blasts a former wwe superstar a kane is by no means the only wrestler being criticized on social media jackson Riker, aka chad lale and killed the wrath of becky lynch after criticizing lynch for her comments about roe v wade's decision uh -oh. the former wwe superstar tweeted Many posts I've seen are heartbreaking, Becky Lynch being one. That life inside of them isn't just a clump. You as a mother should see how precious life is. Those babies in the womb have a right to live. I pray you come to see the bigger picture. Lynch fired back saying, Yes, I chose to be a mother to a daughter that I could safely deliver and afford to raise. A daughter who deserves autonomy over her own body. Banning abortions doesn't stop them, it stops safe ones. God bless you, your ignorance and lack of uterus. Riker incurred his fair share of backstage heat during yes, his time in WWE for his comments concerning Hall of Famer Donald Trump as well as the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. And finally, meet Bray Wyatt 6. And last but not least, it looks like Wyndham Rotunda, aka former superstar Bray Wyatt, has settled on a name, at least when it comes to merchandise. Ringside News reported that Wyatt recently filed for a trademark for Wyatt 6 for clothing mm. purposes. The Eater of the Wells retained the services of Michael E. Dawkins, who is the same attorney who handles trademark issues for many pro wrestlers, including wrestlers who work for AEW. Wyndham recently changed his Twitter name to Wyatt6, with some fans thinking it might signal a return to WWE. 
Wyndham's many teasers have some fans refusing to accept any comeback until Rotunda is back in the ring, though. But they have folks I'm, I'm one of those people in that camp, bro. Uh, we got to stop always coming back to WWE. We don't know that. And I'm not going to speculate that. I'm not going to get hyped up for it. When you guys be in our live streams, you'd be like, oh, he, he's why it's returning. I'm like, stop doing that to yourselves. Stop. Stop. Why would you want him to return when you know he's going to get booked the same goddamn way? Like, come on now. Stop it. Stop it. So I just rather wait to see what happens first before I hop on the he's coming back hype train. Now, the whole situation with a lot of these women wrestlers and just women in general voicing their opinions and displeasure um me personally my personal take on it um am i a, a big fan of abortions i can't say i truly am but i can also say i'm not a woman and i can't relate to that process and i do feel like women should have the right to choose what happens with their body and that's just me personally you feel me? Like I said, I, I, I you know, I, I'm all for pro-life, you know, you know, life being brought into this world. But I also know there's certain situations. Not every situation is just cut and dry. There's certain situations that apply, certain things that happen. And to be honest with you, a lot of us don't even sometimes realize giving birth is a very dangerous situation. You can die from that. Women have died from just giving birth, bringing in life. So I'm not saying it's, life shouldn't be brought into this world, but at the same time, I also feel like women should be able to choose what happens with their body. That's just my personal take on it. We don't have to agree. We can agree to disagree, but that's just me. You feel me? Uh, I think when people take that stance, especially coming from a man, like, oh yeah, it should be this and this is how it should be. It's like, I don't know about that, man. I just if you start regulating that what else will you start regulating you feel me so that's just my personal take on it I understand people emotions are riding high at this time and uh it's it's not you know just a uh cut and dry situation so that's just my personal take but I would like to get y'all personal takes on this whole situation are you guys in the camp of agreeing with Glenn Jacobs or are you guys a part of the camp that is uh, more so aligning themselves with women being able to choose what they do with their body let me know down below if you decide to get into that conversation but i appreciate all the love and support road to 90k appreciate y'all keeping me see you on next one peace